Firefly of New Ghost, separation confirmed. This is CBS AOS, stand by. We have acquisition of signal with a Blue Ghost lander. My name is Curtis Sykovich. I'm a systems engineer on the Blue Ghost program and specifically a flight controller for Blue Ghost Mission 1. My name is Will Adams. I'm the spacecraft thermal lead here at Firefly and I'm a thermal lead on console for Blue Ghost Mission Operations. So we're in week five of the mission. We just completed a burn, we completed LOI 1. LOI is Lunar Orbit Insertion 1. So what we do is we take our velocity and we slow us down so that we can begin orbiting the moon instead of orbiting Earth. So our last burn prior to that pushed us away from Earth, and now we're sort of being caught by the moon. And so that we go into a large elliptical orbit around the moon, which is where we're at right now. The LOI-1 maneuver, which was our, uh, a very critical maneuver because we captured around the moon. If we hadn't captured, we would have been flung into a, a trajectory around the sun, so we would have totally lost course and not been able to land. And it was our longest burn, which means that our propulsion system was firing for the longest that it has so far. It was a little over four minutes versus our previous longest was only 20 seconds on our uh, DLI burn. So it was a very long burn. Our thermal control subsystem had to do its job for four minutes straight, which was the largest test that it's had so far, and it executed great. We are currently in stable orbit around the moon in what we call an elliptical orbit, meaning we come very close to the moon at one part in the orbit and then go very far away in the other part. What we need to do over the next couple of weeks is bring that into a circular orbit over the moon. So what we'll be doing is completing two additional burns. We call them LOI-2 and LOI-3. Each time we're going to get closer to the moon and into a more circular orbit. Now ultimately, we'll be about 100 kilometers off the surface of the moon, pretty close to circular orbit. That'll take us right over our landing site on the day we need to land. So we've recently gone to lunar orbit, and one of the big changes we've noticed is the spacecraft is now a lot farther away from Earth. So something very simple about sending a command, which is what I do as flight controller, we send a command and we realize it now takes seven seconds for that command to go through, do what it's supposed to do, and then respond back to us. Whereas before, it was taking under a second sometimes. And that just shows the distance that we now have from Earth and the time it takes for uh, the radio signals to travel to the spacecraft and back. We've been in Earth orbit for, for most of the mission so far. And then while we were on uh, the translunar trajectory to the moon, it was really a pretty ambient thermal environment. Pretty much all you have is solar radiation hitting the vehicle and then that getting radiated out to space. There's not really other influences from the Earth or the moon or anything like that. Now that we are orbiting around the moon, we have to account for heat that's reflected and radiated off of the moon. So that makes it a little more thermally interesting. Right now we're in an eight hour orbit and every orbit at a very specific point, we'll notice that temperatures kind of go up a little bit, and that's because of that reflected uh, and emitted energy off of the moon getting absorbed by the lander and heating everything up. So coming up in, in lunar orbit, we have some new things that we've not seen before on this mission yet. One of the big ones is going to be communication blackouts. So when we get really close into the moon, we're gonna start going into a circular orbit, and we'll actually be going behind the moon, so we won't be able to see us from the ground. That means we're gonna lose communications for a few minutes at a time while we're traveling behind the moon and we have to plan to make sure that we're not doing anything important when that's gonna happen, and that if we do have anything that happens to us, we can respond to it in the time that we do have signal. For me, the, the big thing I'm looking forward to in the next couple of weeks is after we execute LOI-2, our thermal environment's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be sort of in our hottest orbital phase because we're closest to the moon for really the entire orbit, and that, that's gonna mean we get a lot of additional heat hitting the lander that, that we haven't seen so far in the mission. So what I'm really excited to do is get that data down, see how it compares to what our model predicted, and make sure that we're prepared for, for landing and the temperatures that we're gonna see on the lunar surface. For us, over the next couple of weeks, everyone's very excited to get to landing. <laughs> but before that, we still have to circularize our orbit, bring us lower, and do our, our vision navigation checkouts. So for me, what'll be really exciting is when we're only a few, about 100 kilometers off the surface of the moon, we've got our cameras going, we've got our vision navigation software going, and it's giving us uh, good position knowledge of where we are and when we're going to land so that that system is fully checked out before we go into our final descent. Not everybody that works in aerospace really comes from an aerospace background. Uh, most people, in fact, come from you know, automotive or something different from aerospace. 
We have people at Firefly from all different industries, all different ages. You know, there are literally people sewing bits of the lander. We have industrial steamstresses at our production site who make uh, all of the MLI for the lander. So people working in all different areas that you might not expect have to work on a spacecraft. And, and there's not really a set baseline amount of qualifications that you have to have to work at a company like Firefly. Really, if you have one discipline that you're really good at and you get good at it, it probably is being used on the lander in some capacity. Almost every engineering discipline has to be used on, on a spacecraft because it's, it's such a complicated system. You know, if you have a passion for it and you have uh, some amount of technical fundamentals in, in one discipline, then you're probably already qualified and, um, and it's, it's worth trying. Yeah, so I took a different path to get into the space industry. Uh, I did get my aerospace engineering degree, but I actually left uh, aerospace altogether for about five or six years and I went to work for my family's business, helping them outgrow that. After a while, I decided I wanted to get back into the industry and was able to, to network my way in, ultimately helping to create a startup and running that startup for about a year, which gave me all the experience I need to understand how projects progress forward, a lot of the government regulations that we face today, and uh, get me ready for, for ultimately this job, working on the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander. My words of advice are don't feel bad if you don't get your dream job right out of school. It's gonna take time, just like a mission to the moon, you're gonna have milestones and phases that you have to go through to learn the skill sets you need. You might need to take time to, to figure out what those skills are, working with mentors or understanding more about the job you want, and then gaining that experience through side hobbies, side projects, things that give you a hands-on experience of what that job is going to be like. And the more you do that, the more you'll find you sort of become the ideal candidate for that role by just picking up all the skills.